All right, good day, uh, second year class, MUC 211. This is the uh, fourth week, midweek lecture. Uh, today we are going to continue on harmonic dictation, uh, like we, we prefaced a little bit uh, when we were dealing with the melodic sight singing uh, in last Friday's class. We, we uh, introduced two new harmonic concepts that we, of course, read melodically, now we're going to deal with them harmonically, as uh, relates to harmonic dictation. Okay, and the two, um, the two concepts, the two uh, chords that we're talking about were the Neapolitan sixth and the augmented sixth chord, specifically the German augmented sixth chord. I know you have not gotten into that in harmony in, uh, in your theory class with Dr. Narducci yet, but I do want you to be able to hear that particular chord. So let's first talk about the Neapolitan. As I mentioned on Friday's class, we often call it the Neapolitan sixth because it's most often encountered in first inversion. Okay, if this is the, the one chord, the Neapolitan is a predominant chord, meaning it's a chord that typically precedes the dominant or the five or five seven or a chord with a dominant function built on the lowered second scale degree. So you could lowered major two, that's not how we do it, we call it the Neapolitan using the N. Um, it is possible for these to be in root position as they are here, first inversion or second inversion, but most often encountered in the first inversion. Okay, in the <clears throat> major, mo major mode, uh, and, the, and that's the mode uh, in which we are going to uh, uh, work with this uh, chord first, you're going to need two accidentals in order to make it a, uh, a major triad. Otherwise, without the uh, second accidental, it becomes an augmented triad. So you need the lowered second and the lowered sixth scale degree. So it's really kind of borrowing from Phrygian mode with the lowered sixth and the lowered second. All right. So we're going to try this. We're going to try this. And just to remind you of what this chord sounds like, I'm going to play you a brief example using the Neapolitan. I'll just play it one time, uh, rewind it as many times as you want to uh, so you can get that sound together. I'm going to go one, four, I'm going to go one, four, Neapolitan six, five, one. Notice that spicy predominant chord allows for um, kind of a Phrygian, a Phrygian uh, kind of motion down toward the root of the five chord, that lay, uh, that lay to soul feel. Um, so we'll go ahead and do a harmonic dictation. We're going to start bass only, and then I'm going to add the four parts. So we're, we're kind of throwing two relatively new concepts at you. One concept that's completely new, which is the, ne the use of the Neapolitan sixth chord, and uh, another concept that is relatively new, expanding to four SATB uh, harmonic dictation. But for now, um, let's go ahead, let me get my sheet here. Let's do a sixth voice dictation. So let's start with this bass only. six spaces. We will begin in major mode with Do in the bass and one in the space as we always do. And let me play two times through this example. Two times through the example. As always, use the, uh, use the system that we have already uh, established. Um, find the bass line find uh, the qualities of the chords, and e extrapolate from there. All right, here we go. Bass only. So work 
this out and work out your extrapolations. Now, make a grand staff, tie this together with a ligature, and we will work on SATB dictation. I'll switch it to open position, or a medium, medium open position, um, and go through. I'm going to roll, actually, the composition of the first chord, the voicing of the first chord, so you can hear exactly where the notes are. to. Uh, first thing, I think the easiest thing to find out is where is the doubled root. We know, of course, one root is here in the bass. Where is the doubled C in what voice? Then find the third of the chord, because that's the, uh, the one that has the quality in it, and then find the fifth. Okay, and remember, I will not um, write any overt, uh, overt voice leading problems. I will not make any overt voice leading problems. I will uh, follow the conventions uh, for the most part. Unless unless I am forced to choose between two conventions and have to break one rule, I, usually, I will usually break the lesser of the rules. Okay? So you're not going to see parallel fifths or octaves, you're not going to see spacing errors, you're not going to see cross relations for the most part. All right, let's go for it. SATB. Actually, uh, you're going to want to take the second of those examples. You probably realized that I didn't play Neapolitan the first time. My sheet fell off the piano as I was playing it, and I had to wing it. Uh, so play that second one over. Play that second one over uh, as many times as you can, as many times as you need to figure it out. Okay, so find the voicing. Okay, take what you know from the bass line, from the chord symbols as you have uh, understood them, from the soprano line, which is probably the next easiest piece of information to garner, and fill in the gaps using the theoretical knowledge that you have uh, to find the inner voices when your ear fails you, or your ear to tell you what the chords might be. Okay? The second, the second um, harmonic device that we're going to deal with is the German augmented sixth chord. It's actually part of a class of three augmented sixth chords. And let me show you how, uh, how they work. All augmented sixth chords are built on the lowered sixth scale degree. Lowered sixth scale degree. Le. And okay, the lowered sixth scale degree. To build one, find the lowered sixth scale degree, which we have here. Find an augmented sixth above it. In this case, let me offset that a little for reasons that will become clear in a moment. This is an augmented sixth interval, or it's a, an enharmonically spelled minor seventh, if that makes it easier for you. So to build the German augmented set, uh, sixth, which is just this, or you can sometimes put the plus there to indicate augmented quality, from the root, just build a major triad. C, major third up, and perfect fifth up with the E flat. Okay, that's all there is to it, really. Major triad, augmented sixth interval. If you re-spelled this with um, a G flat, you would have a major minor seventh uh, chord, or you'd have a major minor seventh seventh chord, um, which is the quality of the German. It doesn't have the, the very same function. It's a little bit similar to the secondary dominance that you guys have already been working on with Dr. Narducci, but slightly different, uh, differently conceived. All right, 
And the augmented sixth interval is another predominant chord just like the Neapolitan. It's meant to emphasize the motion toward the dominant and then onward to the tonic. If you think of this raised note wanting to go upward, kind of like T goes to Do, and you end up here. And if you think of Le wanting to go to Sol or Ra to Do, if you're thinking of the Phrygian cadence, then these things move outward to the octave, right to the root notes of the five chord. Just fill that in, and you have a five chord. German sixth to five, and then onward to one, or you can go to six or something else if you want to have a deceptive cadence. All right, so this is how it's built. So when you hear it, know that it'll be built in this manner, and it will go to the five afterwards. Okay, let me play one for you so you can get a sense of how this sounds, and then we'll go ahead and do a dictation. All right, I'm going to play... Um, I'll play one, five, German six, five, one. Again, with um, uh, the next one with six chords uh, set up just this way. Bass only first, so get your bass, uh, get your uh, chord symbols, and prepare your extrapolations and things from that, and then we'll go SATV. All right, two times through the bass only, and here we go. Ready? chord for you so you can get it. All right, and here is that same progression expanded outward to SATB with proper voice leading for the most part. Ready? sure, of course, that these are copied down on staff paper, bring them to class on Friday where we will go over them, and we will see you then. All right, good luck.